Special Forces Part 2 A Story by User Pepper Antique Priority Letter Classification Secret Subject Terran Autogunny Recipient High Command Fleet Acquisition Officer Mercan Begin Message Greetings, Officer Murr. I message you with good, if disconcerting, information regarding something that I believe could be of great use to the war effort. As I'm sure you are aware, I was recently gifted some forces from the Terran military. Commander Val can enlighten you on my difficulties in that regard, if you're interested. However, that is simply a segue into what I really wish to speak of. These Terran warriors brought with them a device that has allowed them a level of autonomy that is all but unheard of in our military. I am speaking of a device known as the Autogunny. Their words, not mine. At first glance, the Autogunny seems simple enough. Put a weapon into its receptacle, tell it what attachments or modifications you desire, hit the start button. Minutes later, it opens back up, weapon completed. But that's an oversimplification. I witnessed, numerous times, these Terran warriors deploying for missions with completely different weapons on their person. Initially, I had simply assumed that they had a small armory in their barracks. To an extent, I was right. At least about several of them. But there was no explanation for how they had so many different alterations done so rapidly. Or even how their lightly equipped members could have entirely different loadouts on each mission. As such, I asked them to explain these different weapon systems. After all, a fleet commander needs to know whether or not there is any dangerous weapon or material on their bases. That was when they introduced me to the autogunny properly, including a hands-on demonstration. Though, obviously for me, it was actually a wing-on demonstration. To put it simply, the autogunny is a marvel in its function. To start, it has a fully comprehensive database of handheld firearms and their modifications. I had initially assumed only Terran weapons, but I was quickly corrected. It actually has data on firearms from several different galactic species, even ours. This was quickly proven when I used it to add an additional three spools of magnetic stabilization to my sidearm, allowing for an extra 31% exit velocity on its projectiles. I must admit, I've made several other adjustments to my personal weapon collection since then. But that is only one facet of what makes the autogunny so fascinating. In addition to modifying weapons, it also has the ability to repair, maintain, completely retool, I still only barely understand this term, and if necessary even fabricate from scratch. The repair slash maintain ability is fairly straightforward. When a weapon has been put into the autogunny, the device logs as much identifying information as it can, so it can remember that specific weapon. Serial slash factory markings, personalization, a human concept, and more are logged and tracked. If the weapon is inserted later, the autogunny can detect standard wear and tear damage, and even detect issues that may result in damage or failure later on. At the user's wish, the autogunny can clean and repair any of it back to the weapon's previous state. All of this effectively eliminates a soldier's need to worry about maintenance of their weapon, as it only takes several minutes for the device to do this routine, although many of the Terrans still choose to do manual weapon maintenance when they can. The retooling ability, as it turns out, is one of the two reasons that I had been so confused about where the Terrans had been getting so many weapons. Retooling is a term the Terrans use for whenever they need something completely refitted to a vastly different set of parameters. In the case of weapons, this can mean things like different caliber, more on that later, different barrel length, different magazine capacity, different interface furniture, new firing mechanism, and as a result, fire rate, and a large series of other alterations that are infinitely customizable. To put it simply, you can put a small assault rifle in the autogunny, and program the device to turn it into something as different as, say, a long-range sniper rifle, or a fully automatic machine gun. You can switch it from a small projectile, small caliber, precision weapon, into one that fires explosive projectiles the size of a human fist, and it will do so just as rapidly and accurately as it had been capable of when it fired bullets. This effectively allows the Terrans to change any weapon as they see fit to work best in their current mission. Is it a stealth mission? Your fire team is now nearly undetectable. Is it a mission that involves enemy armor? Your weapon now fires tungsten cord rounds that melt through armor. Whatever you need your firearm to do, the autogunny can make it happen. Customization is as easy as utilizing the interface to enter your desired specifications. All of these features are astounding in and of themselves. Any one of them would make an autogunny a great addition to our military's day-to-day -day functions. 
However, it is the Autogunny's last feature that truly sets it apart. Its ability to create entirely new weapons is needed. Now, automated manufacture of weapons is nothing new. Seven Hells, we have plenty of automated factories back home. And not just for weapons, but all manner of things. Rather, it is the fact that Autogunny can do it with raw material. The Autogunny device is only roughly the size of the bunks the humans use to sleep in their barracks. Once deployed, the device has a hopper, as the humans call it, on its left side. This hopper is basically just a glorified, and in this case heavily reinforced, funnel, leading into some kind of material analysis mechanism. I haven't been able to deconstruct or scan the Autogunny since it came here. Apparently, it is heavily classified by Terran High Command, so I can't actually tell you how it functions inside. But basically, all the Terrans have to do is keep the gunny well fed with a healthy, balanced diet, as they all kept telling me any time I inquired. This behavior was odd, as it is one of the few times I ever witnessed the Terrans being uniform in something, even if that something was a simple yet nonsensical answer to a question. What it means in reality is that the Terrans basically put anything they can think of into the hopper to feed the autogunny's mechanism. Typically, this means metal and plastic. Though I have personally witnessed the Terrans pouring all manner of metal fastenings, plastic refuse, and at times even various cleaning chemicals, and just plain old dirt into the hopper. Usually while saying, bon appetit, enjoy the meal, or order up, this last one is typically responded to by the others present, with a bunch of them yelling, ding. Like I told Commander Val, Terrans are weird. Regardless, the Autogunny then sorts, processes, and refines whatever is put into it. It then utilizes the material, whatever it may be, to fabricate whatever parts or even ammunition is needed for its current assignment. Depending on the material, this may take several minutes, or in the case of simpler materials, mere seconds. If local dirt or flora is entered into the hopper, if local dirt or flora is entered into the hopper, it can even be tagged as reference for applying camouflage, painting, or finishes on future weapons. As if that wasn't enough. The Terrans admitted they also have several EA gunnies available. That stands for Emergency Auto Gunny. Incredibly creative with their name schemes, these Terrans. These are typically kept in emergency kits aboard long-distance vehicles. Or in what the Terrans call a bug-out bag. Though I don't understand why anyone would want to have a bag full of bugs. Much less want to let those bugs out. And yes, I did ensure that the bag didn't have a restrained Authinian in it. Apparently, bug out is simply another human euphemism. Still, these EA gunnies are small, only roughly the size of a Terran combat helmet. They are solar, crank, and wind powered as needed, or can simply plug in if possible. And while they can only produce weapons that would qualify as pistols, or small carbines done in sections, I believe that these could be an incredible addition to our emergency kits and escape pods. All things said, I fully believe I may understand why the Terrans assigned to my fleet seem to treat their auto gunny as some sort of deity. They have festooned theirs with numerous markings and offerings that apparently appease its machine spirit. Humans have sentient machines? Though their commander assured me they were simply meant to be used as emergency supplies should they run low. He doesn't know that I've seen him bow before it several times when he didn't know I was there. Either way, the Autogunny fulfills an incredibly vital and at times fun role within the Terran combat and survival logistics. As such, I hereby fully believe that we should request permission to reverse engineer these devices should the Terran Command allow it. It could be seen as an extension of goodwill between allies. I also believe that it would enhance our force's self-sufficiency many times over, even if it does end up causing more Terran-like oddities among our troops. For once, I am actually pleased with an aspect of these Terrans being assigned to my fleet. Signed, Clardan, 3rd Fleet Commander. If you're new here, welcome aboard. Check out the description for the story, and join the Discord if you'd like. Consider supporting the channel and the author as well. It's a dangerous world out there, but remember to be brave and look up to seek the stars.